Hi, I'm an Australian guy living in Belarus, but of course I'm not in Belarus now. I am in Helsinki, Finland, and I've been here for a couple of days and I have some reflections on the things that I kind of miss about Belarus and how different some things are here. First of all, the prices are absolutely friggin' outrageous. Where do I even start? Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> an entry level kebab is like 11 euros. Whereas in Belarus, it's like maybe 2.5 euros. Uh, blueberries in Belarus, you can buy a kilo of blueberries, cherries, strawberries, one kilo for less than three euros. Here it's like 45 euros or something for a kilo of blueberries. It's like, it's like a euro for a blueberry. <laughs> it's quite remarkable. Um, Cause I'm sure their salaries aren't crazy high. Like I can't imagine they're much higher than Australia, but these prices are, even compared to Australia, must be 30, 40% higher. And most of your basic day-to-day -day restaurants where you might go for a casual meal, yeah, 11, 12 euros, and then it's not even really a meal. They, they're really into the kind of salad lifestyle here. And most of the time you're just getting a salad with maybe 100 grams of chicken, and it's like more like an entree. Maybe a potato, there's, some, there's this picnic brand franchise that has some big potato meals, but uh, it's still not really a meal, and it's 12 euros. So possibly for the first time in my life, I reverted back to going to a supermarket uh, to buy some stuff just to make some basic food. So I can actually get filled up for less than 50 euros a day, maybe 80 euros a day, if I was gonna live a fairly good life here. So the prices are crazy. The metro prices, oh my goodness. Just for the zone A, zone A is like just the inner city essentially. It's like nine euros for a daily pass nine euros and you can't even go everywhere for that just like the inner city kind of area all right enough complaining about the prices second up i noticed people here are also extremely polite just like they are in belarus got this real soft kindness about them but here they take it even further and i'd argue they take it to the point where it's actually quite ridiculous let me give you an example so if you like cross the street as a pedestrian uh cars will generally stop for you right here and in belarus uh, as well but here as well that the trams and buses stop for you and it's like I'm crossing the street and you're driving a bus with like 80 people on it mate I think you should go first right just in terms of like global efficiency efficiency uh, of everybody summed together why would you make 80 people wait for just me like seriously just drive the freaking bus bro. it's all right the car okay the car stops for me 50 50 call whatever right but for me, this is ridiculous. It's really inefficient. Okay, it's all nice and polite, and we're all civil here, and that kind of stuff, but it's really silly. Like, I'm just like, what are you guys doing? I can see that much like Belarus has, this place has quite a strong sense of self, quite a strong sense of their own identity and their own culture, which is quite nice to come to a place and feel that. It's quite refreshing, it's quite enjoyable, and you feel like you're really in a unique country. It's interesting to see the way people present here. Uh, it's almost similar to Australia, like in Australia we've got a real kind of dress down kind of culture. Uh, we don't really have this kind of merit based thing going too much. We're going to have this more of a drag down culture, tall poppy syndrome we call it. And I'm aware that a lot of European countries have something similar indeed. I believe that Scandinavian countries are quite famous for it too and you can kind of see it. Most people just don't care too much about what they wear. It's pretty similar to Australia, whereas in Belarus uh, everybody, or more or less everybody, especially under 40s, they really care. Like it's like going to a fashion parade, just walking down major streets in Minsk. Whereas here, you know, you just see a lot of guys with just kind of crappy t-shirts that are stretched around the neck and discolored and this kind of stuff. And the women kind of just wearing loose sloppy clothes and nothing really in style or in fashion. Which, you know, of course there's pros and cons of both situations. But interesting to note, a uh, solid contrast there. Because you do get used to living where you're living. You know, you get used to the norms of where you live. So when you're dumped in with such a contrast, you really notice it. Spilling over, spilling over from the clothing situation is the physique situation. I think people here are generally a little bit heavier than in Belarus. Well, there's certainly no problems here in terms of obesity and this kind of stuff. People are just a little bit podgier on average, probably similar to Australia. What you do notice, linked to that though, a lot of people running, a lot of people walking, a lot of people riding bikes, a lot of bikes here. People just feel kind of active. That's the vibe here. And Belarus has a lot of walking as well, and they have the infrastructure for bikes, but people don't really ride bikes much. 
tends to be car or foot or scooter. Scooters are big in Belarus, as I mentioned that. One goes past here. Uh, scooters are here too, but nowhere near as big as in Belarus. But yeah, the bicycle population here is really crazy. Let's try and get across this light. Um, yeah, the bicycle population here is really high, and you can really see that it's taken very seriously. But in Belarus, they do have the infrastructure for it, but it's a bit of an afterthought, and it's a bit of like, well, what do we do with the bikes? Whereas here, bikes seem like a legitimate uh, third mode of transport, along with uh, cars and legs. That does, of course, make walking around pretty complicated. You've got to constantly look left and right, and uh, you don't know where to look or when to look. You're kind of constantly looking left and right to make sure you're not going to get run over or run into a bicycle or another person. It's a bit complicated here, something I've got to get used to. And then the overall feel of the city, like Minsk is very well organized. It's very functional, hugely functional, hugely efficient, but it's kind of a bit dreary, you know? It's got that communist polish, well organized, but not pretty. Uh, for the most part, there's pretty parts of it, but of course, big parks and that kind of stuff, which is uh, part of the communist overhang, but it's kind of got this repetitive, dreary vibe about it sometimes. And here in Helsinki, it's a bit more of a traditional kind of European city with a lot of apartments. So it's got a good mix of kind of modern and traditional uh, European living. Alrighty, because I'm such a nice chap, I'll take you guys for a bit of a walk. We're headed towards the city centre. We're pretty close to it. Might have another maybe 15 minutes of B-roll here. Let's have a bit of a stroll down. It's a fairly uh, busy part of town because it's not really busy, you know. It's a pretty small city, pretty dense living. And as I was saying in the main video there, a lot of exercise. This girl's got her sports bra on. This lady does too, with the dog, so she's legit. See bike racks there with the bikes. Everyone kind of walking. Walking vibes. I do appreciate that. I mean, unfortunately, there's politics put into this nowadays, but <clears throat> I think we're better off as a society kind of doing things this way, getting away from the automobile. We stop being so bloody fat. It's a good starting point. Stop having heart disease and all that kind of stuff. Or even stop having it, obviously, but <clears throat> it certainly strengthen the body. Lighten it and strengthen it. Freaking good idea. What a good idea. But of course you can't change Anglo cities now because we've built them around cars, right? We've built American and Australian cities around cars, so you can't kind of change it. Is the reality. Although they're slowly building it up in my city, Melbourne, anyway. Anyway, we're in Helsinki, so let's talk about Helsinki. Here's some more bicycle traffic. Pretty well built up areas. It feels quite livable. It's fairly, you know, as far as cities go. I wonder how popular these bikes are. Well, there's a lot of them, so you think, oh, they must be popular. But then, of course, no one's using them. Well, that dude is. He's off on one. Later, bruh. Well, let's wander this way. So let's get to the end of the street here and then we'll take a big turn left and then right and then we're pretty much in the city centre. And it does actually get quite busy in the city centre because there is a fair bit of tourism. And at the end of the day, tourists is what makes the city super busy, right? Whether it's New York or Melbourne or uh, Helsinki. So just at the end there, we'll do a left and a right and then bang, we'll be in the heart of it all. So you can see there's a lot of kind of more modern Apartment buildings here. This is where I'm living. About another couple of kilometers from here. That's kind of what it is, that more modern look. It's funny, whenever I'm in Minsk and I start paying out how ugly some of the buildings are, because some look good, but some look terrible. Especially the, uh, oh, there was a period there, I think in the late 60s, early 70s, they were building these, it's almost like a white brick, but it wasn't a brick. It was like the, the look of a brick on the outside. Oh God. They look terrible, I'll tell you what. Um, so I pay these out to people. And then people are like, oh, well, they'll live forever. And it's kind of true. Some of those commie structures will probably live forever. Well, not forever, but, you know, a couple hundred years maybe. These ones, who knows? Not sure about building regulation, but knowing Scandinavian countries, I'm sure that. 
<laughs> oh, there's an encyclopedia on building regulation. Uh, no doubt. So yeah, what I said in the main video about people kind of waiting for each other. Another thing I've noticed actually is that here, guys and girls, because there's like, it's a different kind of feminism to Belarusian feminism. <clears throat> but you actually see the egalitarianism actually comes through in t at times. Whereas in Belarus, it's kind of not really that. Although this feminism is still very much uh, genders. Whereas here, you can see uh, just little things. I, I feel like little social etiquette things tell you a lot uh, about a culture. And you can see, just for example, you know, going in and out of doors, giving way to each other. I see that women do it almost as much as men here. Uh, whereas in Belarus, uh, half the women think that men come with an automatic stop function. And you'll see this uh, going in and out of the metro area with those swingy door things. You'll see this, whereas a lot of women will just... Like a man will be holding the door, then the woman goes through the door without holding it for the next person. Uh, this happens a lot. A lot of women do still hold it, probably 50 50, I reckon. About half hold it for the next person, half just walk through it like it's being held for them, and then the next person's got to open it themselves rather than just kind of holding the door perpetually open. This kind of stuff happens in Belarus. This kind of mentality. But here it's a bit more egalitarian. In that respect but then look who looks better here the men or women i reckon the men look better here i haven't seen many women where i thought gee she looks attractive or you know she puts a lot of effort in uh, it doesn't happen so much here it does but not obviously compared to uh, a place like minsk where the women look better than the men although even in saying that i mean 30 years ago they did and buy a lot right that's what subway advertisement for you but that, that gap between men and women in Belarus is shrinking. Um, especially in Minsk, in a city Minsk. The gap between men and women in terms of their appearance is shrinking. Uh, it's still pretty big though. Uh, whereas here, oh look, they're pretty similar. But if I was going to say either way, I'd probably say the men look slightly better. I'll put it out there. But in general, neither puts much effort in. You can, you can just see right, how they dress. Just like Australians would dress. Just whatever daggy stuff I saw on the bed this morning. And they just put it on. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, effort put in. You can see for yourself what I'm talking about. Go there with the tracky decks. Oh man, this is bicycle. Uh, oh, hang on a minute. Does that mean I should be on there? I can't tell what's going on with this. I'm just going to walk kind of on the edge. Because I'm an etiquette man. I'm all about that friggin' etiquette, mate. I love it. I love social etiquette. I don't entirely know where I am, to be honest with you. But I reckon we're going to kind of go that way-ish. Well, there's a police. Maybe I can ask them. So English levels here are fairly high. I haven't spoken to that many people. We're just at the checkout and had a few random conversations with people. And <clears throat> English seems to be fairly good. Mixed. No, that's green there, but our one is red. And there's no obvious way to get across this, wow, this multi-lane. I'm going to get across this bad boy. There's Nail. See, these girls are kind of on that side there. Which makes me think that actually, oh uh, yeah, that's more for bikes. This one's here, is for uh, pedestrians. I think under there is a pedestrian. Worn off. See, I told you, they're so active, they're wearing off the bicycle and person sign. I'm not thinking. So that's kind of nice. It looks a bit too feminist for my liking, but aside from that, I don't mind it. Um, I guess the only other gripe, apart from that kind of hardcore feminist kind of thing going on, but they don't, it's not as hardcore as it is in the Anglosphere. In the Anglosphere, you feel like there's a real agenda to really kind of devalue men. Um... Whereas here, they still like their men. On some level, respect them, but they just control them. <laughs> but they're, they're still nice. Like, it's, like, it's like a functional matriarchy. 
It's a functional matriarchy. Yeah? It was in the West, we're kind of going this path of, I think, dysfunctional matriarchy. Uh, even though in saying that here, there's still... It's really weird. You look around, you see so many two-children families. If you just had an astute eye, you noticed a bit earlier, I walked past the baby stroller shop. It's a big one. And as I say, lots of two-child... Oh, wow. Big cemetery. Yeah, a lot of two child families which is something you don't see in well you don't see it in Minsk and you don't see it in Brest um wow you guys want to hear some dad jokes I've got some rippers alright there's some dad jokes about cemeteries no disrespect bless you all I sincerely mean it but I have got some dad jokes related to cemeteries I'm going to share with you one is this is the dead centre of town boom boom take that the next one is my personal favourite. Oh man, it's so good in there. People are dying to get in there. Oh, dad joke. Take that. You can share that, yeah? It's not copyrighted. You can take that and you can tell your friends those jokes. I'm not joking with you. Well, I am joking with you, but not joking about that you can share a part. So I'm really hopeful we can kind of turn right somewhere. I have a feeling we might have gone past the centre. There's nowhere to get across. What was I talking about? Um, yeah, yeah, so here it's it's kind of, it's a weird place. As I say, I'd call it a functional matriarchy. And it's one that can actually sustain over some time. Because they still kind of like their men. You ask a Finnish woman, what do you think about men? They're like, I like our men. Whereas, uh, I think in a lot of, uh, increasingly in Anglo cultures, maybe women don't have to share the same opinion. Maybe in Belarus, probably don't share the same opinion either. Uh... And you can't help but feeling that's kind of been engineered in a little bit. What's well, being engineered as we speak is my opinion. Well, it's just from what you see, the way men are depicted. I just saw the Barbie movie board, the advertisement board for the Barbie movie. And you see that kind of just casual disrespect of having the man over, like the hand, her hand over the guy's head in this kind of condescending, disrespectful way. And this has been going on for decades, really to, trying to portray men as stupid and goofy and idiotic. And this is definitely something being engineered into us, uh, no doubt. Whereas here, I think less so. Sorry about that camera thing. My gimbal broke, so I'm kind of just kind of holding it and going raw, so to speak. Uh, I'm trying to hold this as still as possible, and I'm on a 2x zoom to try to get some uh, oh, to try to get some uh, nice close footage to see people. Oh wow, this is a massive cemetery. My goodness, so you can see a whole family there. There's uh, three, four from the same family. That's pretty cool that they can bury them together. It's actually really cool. Alright, I feel like I've just chosen the wrong place to walk here. Oh no, they're walking, it's okay. We can walk as well. But I definitely want to get across. Maybe we can cross there. This is a good little place to ride and to scoot, you can see, nice and flat. It's good. Uh, yeah, so, but it's interesting here because I I'm calling it a functional matriarchy and that it works, you know. Uh, but I am noticing that I was looking at some data. I love data. And I've noticed that the fertility rate here is plummeting as well. So maybe mixing in a bit too much Western liberalism. Because at the end of the day, cultures are pretty robust, you know. Cultures are bloody strong. They hold together. They keep each other, you know, it takes a, a serious external programming, reprogramming to change, you know. So if it's functioning, um, you can hear it. You guys hear that? Oh, sorry. Um, I think I was doing the wrong thing there. I think I was in the wrong place, so he apologised to me. That's a Finnish person, they're so polite. They're so polite. What do you guys think about politeness? Because I was just in the shopping center then, buying some super glue to fix my stupid gim gimbal, and I heard this four loud men, and I could recognize they were speaking Russian, and they show up, you've got four really large Russian dudes, and they're loud, and they're brash, and they're, you know, they're probably really good people, 
but they just do it a lot differently, these kinds of guys, compared to Belarus and Finland. Belarus and Finland's more about that kind of external politeness. Um, whereas Russians aren't as much about that, regardless of what they really think about you. Because, you know, people do argue that a lot of service level politeness is fake, right? It's just fake. Why, why are you so fake? But that's what Russians would say about Americans. It's like, oh, it's all fake. And look, there's a lot of truth in that. There is a lot of truth in that, to support the Russian version. Um, a lot of truth in that. And it does become wearing sometimes, having to be super polite. But I feel like if, if it's sincere, I think it's really nice. I think it's... Uh, this helps to build a sense of community, right? If everyone has the same kind of ideal. This is our culture, this is what we do, we're polite to each other. This is part of being Finnish, you know? I think in that case, I think it's really good. I think it's really good. Um, I remember being in Sweden a few years ago and I was speaking to a lady from, um, I forget where she was from, but she wasn't Swedish and oh, I'm sure things have changed a bit now, but you know, 10 years ago, I mean, countries like this were pretty bloody homogenous, you know, uh, ethnically homogenous, and therefore largely, uh, probably therefore largely uh, culturally homogenous. And she said to me, oh, I wish I remember where she was from, but she said to me that uh, it's all fake. She said the Swedes are fake, it's full of shit, they hate each other deep down. But that's interesting, because of course that could just reflect her opinion on things, doesn't mean it's right. I mean, she's correct. She's got superior insight to anyone else. Well, let's get across here. Uh, but it was interesting. Uh, you know, what do you do, right? Unless you live somewhere for your whole life, you've got to take these anecdotes and try and make sense of them. As much like I do in Belarus, just try and work out what's going on. Based off conversations and discussions and so forth. Wow, look at this dog. It's like a freaking horse. Oh my goodness. Such a big dog. Yeah. How much does he weigh? He must weigh uh, 60 about, kilos. Uh, 80 kilos. 80? Yeah, yeah. Oh my yeah. god, he weighs more than uh, yeah. me. Maybe Hello. He's <laughs> oh, he's been on a diet. Yeah. It, what kind of breed? He looks like he's half a horse. Uh, what yeah, kind of breed is he? He's Irish oh, don't lick me. <laughs> What's up? Irish wolfhound. They used to hunt it. Uh, Irish wolfhound. Uh, wow. Uh, like I have to zoom in. They hunt wolf in team. Uh -huh. uh, they did it by themselves. Oh wow, they can do it alone. This guy looks strong. Yeah, there are, they... There are lovely pictures uh, on the Ireland when they have the army and they are doing the marching. Uh -huh. They are always having a wolf hunt, bigger one than this one. Wow. And they have the mantle on, on, on the back and, and, and yeah, yeah. They wow. They lovely. <laughs> so are these, I might have missed it, but are these native to I, I Finland? Am. Of Ireland it is, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah wow, yeah, this guy yeah, is up to they, my belly button. Yeah. But this is one of the uh, national breeds, so, uh -huh. yeah, they have had their ages. That's wonderful. How old is he, or uh, she? He's now a bit over seven, so he's getting a bit old. Oh, yeah. He's <laughs> yeah. getting some grey hairs here, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and his ears. Oh, yeah, yes, as well. Yeah. yeah, he's not groomed now, so, so um, yeah. Good. Should do that, but haven't done that. Oh, it'll take you three days, I think. He's so big. <laughs> oh, <not really. laughs> Got to retire, just joking. Yeah, yeah, All right, good yeah. to meet you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye, you too. <clears throat> 80 kilos. 80 kilos, man. Like, I, I noticed it from afar. I was like, fuck, that's a pretty big dog. And then the closer it got, it got, like, obviously bigger because of, you know, optics, but it seemed to be a bigger... Like I was zooming the camera in on you. <clears throat> I have to say I like old people. While I'm being philosophical. <clears throat> Actually, I like young people too. But I kind of feel for old people, especially in places like Europe where the family unit's broken down a bit. There's been a few generations of just one or two kids. You see this a lot in Belarus. It's quite heartbreaking, really. Uh, you got the Elba Bushka and... She might have had one or two kids, but, you know, say one moves off to Poland and one, who knows, busy with their own kids. And the husband dies and she's 60, she spends the next 20 years living alone. 
catching the metro in Minsk, pulling up her shopping bag up and down those steps, coming home from Kamarovka Market. It's pretty sad, man, I have to say. Like, families are tight in Belarus, but they are in that they do love each other and they care about each other, but then they're kind of not because kids are happy just to piss off somewhere. You know what I mean? That's the cold, hard truth of it. I think we should... Yeah, I don't really know where we are, to be honest. I reckon what I'll do... Oh, there's a bit of foot traffic in this way. Let's go down here. Um, and, and I do see... They say that they're close, and I do hear that they're close, but I do think that, you know, if you choose to go to a different country for a you know, 20% or 30% increase in your purchasing power and you're willing to leave your family and friends behind for that, I, I don't think you value the friends and family that much, just to be brutally honest. Um... Although this time of year, you'll get a lot of people back visiting their family and stuff. So they do care, I think, a lot. And I think, as I say, I think the families are quite close. But once you've had, you know, a couple of generations of feminism, you only have, you know, one or two kids and then one or two kids. And there's a bloody narrow bloodline. And if you don't get along particularly well or don't have a lot in common or, you know, they leave the country or move to a different part of the city, I mean, what happens? You're alone when you're old, so... I quite like having those conversations with oldies. I mean, that's just a you know, three-minute chinwag with that lady, but yeah, it's quite nice, um, especially as I get even older again, into even 60s, 70s. All right, so a bit quiet here. I reckon what we're going to do is cross and go in there. I reckon we should be somewhere near that kind of central area where the bus and train stations are. This is looking a bit busier. <laughs> I actually meant to make a video about this. I, I'm the only person that does this in the whole of Minsk. But whenever I see a babushka trying to get her shopping bag up and down those steps in a Minsk metro station, I always take it. I'm always like, Mojina. And she looks at me like, stop. I'm like, yeah. can I carry it, love? And she's like, please. <laughs> and she wouldn't believe just how flipping happy the old ladies get, you know. They're like 75 and yeah you can see they're, they're tough you know they pick their potatoes they carry their luggage they're tough but uh uh you know it's it's uh they're only human and um you know lugging up that 10 12 15 kilos of bloody fruit and vegetables from the market it's tough going so i should often just kind of cross here this is where it's complicated there's so many oh this is all just one way that's interesting What's this guy doing? Are you going to stop for me? Why not? Of course he's going to stop for me. Oh, I know where I am. Oh, cool. I know exactly where I am now. All right, let's keep going with this. They do pretty well not to bump into each other, these fins. That's probably why they're so, or part of the reason they're so kind of passive in their physical movements in terms of like always waiting for each other. I think it's... Uh, there's so many bikes and cars and people kind of going everywhere and it's kind of... Oh, this is very Belarusian. It's just a joke, right? It's just a joke. But you know that, you know, marriage isn't taken seriously. Again, it's, it's a quote-unquote innocent joke, but it does reflect that, yeah, marriage is not taken seriously. Because a serious society took marriage seriously, wouldn't make a joke about it like that. <clears throat> you find conservative societies that have low divorce rates and uh, uh, you know, haven't quote unquote liberalised, they don't make these kinds of jokes. We're trained to think they're innocent, but I sometimes just wonder are they really that innocent? So I realised that I've zoomed because that dog was trying to lick my camera. <laughs> So I kind of zoomed, zoomed out a little bit. <laughs> so you could see it was his hairy face. <laughs> uh, so let's get it back to about a, what are we on there, about a 1. Uh, 1. 1.7. Trying to walk as smoothly as possible. I've been going for 23 minutes, that's a pretty good, pretty good go. I might get around the corner there into the shade and say das Danya. Interesting seeing this uh, rainbow stuff here. It's been uh, some time since the official month ended. Uh, 
something you don't see in Belarus. It's not the only political symbol around nowadays. Thank you, sir. Actually, I've heard a large amount of Russian speakers since I've been here. I mean, I guess I'm sensitive to it. You know what I mean? Whereas this local language, man, I've got no idea what they're talking about. Although I've picked up a few words that are similar. But I think it's just by chance, to be fair. Um, I can actually go here. I don't know where to look. I literally don't know where to look. I'm just relying on people not running me over. There you go, a bit of street pride for you guys. I know you guys will love it. It's really funny how uh, well, there's a lot of like quote unquote kind of trad con traditional conservative American guys in Belarus. Uh, but, and people kind of hate this, this term woke. You, I'm sure you've heard this term woke. If you've vaguely followed politics in the last five years, this has become a really popular word, woke. Like I've woken up to society or something. Um, and it's, it's, it's seems to now have morphed into this slang political term for um, people subscribing to the postmodern inspired kind of social lobby groups uh, such as feminism or Black Lives Matter or LGBT or whatever else. Um, this seems to be a term for them as a crew now is woke. And it's kind of, uh, I guess, a sarcastic because people would argue they haven't woken up to anything. Indeed, they've been brainwashed and they're not awake at all. Uh, oh, this is what I was talking about. This. See, that's just kind of that subtly condescending. You think it's nothing in particular? You think it's nothing in particular, but whenever I see something like this, I think, well, how would that look if you reverse the genders there? Uh, yeah. Maybe I'm too sensitive to this stuff. I probably am. Anyway, there it is. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, most people don't even care about that quote unquote work stuff. Most of the traditional conservative guys, everyone just kind of says the same thing. It's like, I don't really care if you're gay, just don't um, tell it to me every five minutes. It's a fascinating time in history, actually, this way. Oh well, this is obviously the place to put the scooters. Almost. All right, we are super close. Uh, do I know where we are? Yeah, I do. Oh, we're really close to the center now. It's just there. Oh, that one's not being green. Oh, let's go this way. Fun. Away it goes. We will wait patiently. Yeah, Europe is quite livable. Quite livable. Um, I don't mind the Scandinavian countries, I have to say. Again, a bit too feminist. Um, but they're workable. You know what I mean? Like, I've heard a lot of guys say, you know, society must be a patriarchy for it to function in the long term. And there's some credibility behind that, but I think there are examples of more matriarchal societies that can last for periods of time as well. This is definitely one of them. Although, as I say, the facility right now has dropped down to uh, same as Belarus, 1.4 per woman, which is not much, and it's it defies what I'm seeing. So I'm seeing lots of two kid families um, and very engaged parents. Whereas Belarus, I hate to say it, but I don't think the parents are as engaged, and that will come through in the adjustment levels of the children. One of the biggest complaints of Belarusian women is that the men don't really embrace fatherhood so much. I don't think that's an entirely fair observation, but maybe in some circumstances it's true. <clears throat> but uh, I think a lot of Belarusian men are also good dads. <clears throat> I remember, just an anecdotal thing, I remember I was... Uh, waiting for somebody I was just kind of standing there and these are uh, two 
fairly youngish ladies were standing there as well. And I thought I'd just talk to them for one or two minutes. Just like in a good mood. Woo! Um, and we're just kind of chatting and one of the girls, she did a couple of things where I thought, goodness, you have a remarkable character. And I think she'd done a second thing that I'd noticed. And I said to her, I can tell you were raised well. You have a good dad, don't you? You have a good relationship with him. You respect him. And he's done well to raise you well, right? And she nodded and said, yes, I am. And it was so interesting. When I said that to her, you could see how interested she was in me. It's really interesting because I had picked this up. And it's really central to her uh, as a person. And she was really interested in me, but I wasn't really interested in her. And I didn't. I was just chatting just to be friendly and just kill a few minutes. Yeah? But I could see that she really appreciated that being acknowledged or understood. It's one of those little funny anecdotes that stick in your head. Again, just an anecdote. It's one piece of data. N equals one. As the statisticians say, N equals one is a low data set. So we're pretty close to the center now. I'll give you guys a couple more minutes of this. In fact, I'll take you to... Uh, I'll take you to the bus stop. Ah, uh, sorry. How did I get here? <laughs> Fuck, how did I get here? I got here by plane. What am I talking about? Oh, you know, I got a train from the plane. So I'll, I'll take you to the train station maybe where I started uh, yesterday. Yeah, the prices here, oh my God. I mean, everyone knows Scandinavian prices are crazy, right? But uh, <laughs> it's really mind blowing. I mean, even the hotels, you're struggling to get it. Just a hotel for a hundred euros, you know? Um, and just, yeah, basic basic meals are, are so often like, yeah, 12 euros. And gee, it's not much, you know? It's not much in there. But then weirdly, chocolate bars are super cheap. Chocolate bars are even cheaper here than they are in Belarus. But they're fresh food, like you... Oh, this is a short, actually. They're short comparing the prices. The prices here are like 12 times more or something <laughs> than blueberries in Belarus. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> like, how can you have the 12x up? Because it's a pretty similar climate, right? Like, they're not far from each other. If they can grow well in Belarus, sure they can grow well here. And you'd imagine, okay, labor's more expensive, yeah, yeah, but... You know, you'd imagine they'd create some way of making labor more efficient, right? That's why labor's expensive, because it's so efficient. Because of uh, modifications in the, uh, uh, in the uh, production process. Let's just state the friggin' obvious, in case you're not an economics nerd. All right, we're getting to the busy part here. This is, uh, over this side, is uh, where the bus station is. Really busy bus station here been here before I'm sure you'll be recognizing some more significant landmarks on the way through a couple of major shopping centers here this one actually had some signs in Russian uh, I've noticed quite a few Russians here I guess I'm sensitive to the accent uh, to the to the language in general <coughs> and yeah the temperament of Finns and Russians are a little bit different right <laughs> on average on average I met this uh, dude, uh, he's a Russian dude, I met him in Minsk, and he was gay as hell. He was 100% gay, but I didn't realise, for like an hour of chatting, I didn't realise, because he was still quite masculine, because he was Russian, right? <laughs> he's still like, yeah, very much, yeah, very nationalistic, very proud of his culture and traditions, which I think in general is a good thing, that people have this sense of uh, closeness to their history. And their ancestry, I think this can only be healthy for um, people. Let's get across. So we had all that, and it was just very masculine. He didn't have any kind of feminine traits or anything, and I didn't even realise. It's kind of funny. So yeah, I've just noticed a few here, and it's like, well, they are neighbours, despite the politics of the day. When I want to say politics of the day, I really just mean the politics of the last year. Um, if that was to end, feels like it will never end but hopefully it will very soon for everybody involved um, in a way that make people happy and sat you know more or less satisfied with the outcome on both sides to stop too much any part two kind of shit happening later on um, hopefully it will 
you've probably noticed that I don't talk much about politics on the channel. Uh, especially that topic, I'll leave that one right alone. <clears throat> but, um, just partly out of respect as well, even though I have opinions on these things, but I recognise that someone might disagree, and if they disagree, they might be really passionate about it, you know, and really believe in what they believe in, and you know, we can only uh, know what we've been told, right? So, I don't want to start creating dramas like this over something that's got nothing to do with me anyway. Um, I do mention a bit of like the you know right wing left wing stuff. I mean I'm probably uh, I don't even know where I sit on the left wing right wing spectrum because I do like a lot of leftist ideas, but I'm not sure if 2023 version of leftist ideas are, are quite what they say on the packet. You know what I mean? I'm a bit suspicious of them to be fair because they're, they're making some wacky claims which are quite easy to disprove. Whereas a lot of the basic ideas of leftism is supposed to be kindness and empathy and this kind of stuff, but I, I don't think that that's what they're doing now. So I'm kind of in this political no man's land. But I do recognise that oh, my audience is mixed politically, but I would say uh, right leaning if I was to aggregate everyone up. So we're getting really into the busy part here really close to the train station down there, I'll keep going. Um, yeah, if I was to aggregate my audience up on political preference, they'd probably lean right, but you get plenty of... Uh, a good buddy of mine, American guy, he's really left. He's like radically left. Like radical for radical left. Um, he's a bit of a commie file like myself. Even communism itself is a bloody polarizing topic, isn't it? To be fair. I wish I could understand what they're saying. <laughs> I hate that when you keep changing countries, but you can't learn the language fast enough. <laughs> and you don't know what they're talking about. All right, let's, um, pretty keen to go on the shade, I'll tell you what. Let's go to the other side here. It looks like some kind of tram thing will come at some stage, just not now. So we are safe to cross over. All right, we're pretty close to the destination. We're 36 minutes in, so I figure uh, we might as well end it now. Although we are in the busy part, actually. I'll give you another minute. This is some interesting people watching. You get a lot of tourists and uh, odds and ends people around. Now, which I think is interesting. In the genetics, it's always a fun international airport game. Where is he from? Where is she from? There you go, Found a little bit of a. Oh, Hesburger, this must be the uh, Finnish uh, equivalent of. Uh, Competitor to McDonald's or Burger King or what have you. Actually, you know what? I think down there might be where I was looking for. Yeah, it is. This is quite a busy little walk right here. This is kind of pumping. This is like peak. And it's back to the train station there. You get a train from the airport. That's where you'll uh, come from. Alright peeps, look at that, bit of free B-roll extras for you guys. Uh, let me know what you think about Helsinki, about what I've said today, about what we've been talking about. And I'll see you in another video very soon.